Hey guys, welcome to my channel and today I'm going to tell you how I managed to save thousands of rupees in electricity bill. So basically I am running a supermarket in my home and that supermarket is about 2000 square foot large. So there are a lot of lightings, a lot of fans, a lot of refrigerators for cooling the groceries and there is a very large cooler for keeping the mart a bit cool. So the electricity bill is northward of rupees 10,000 per month. So I'm going to tell you how I managed to cut that bill five to six times. So currently I'm getting a bill of rupees 1700. So what happened was recently I installed some solar panels. Those were Adani's half cut solar panels and the combined uh, energy output of those solar panels was 8 kilowatt. So where I was getting 9,000 or 10,000 rupees of electricity bill once, today I'm getting just 1,700 rupees of electricity bill. And I am going to give you a proof of my statement. I'm going to tell you what exactly my electricity bill was. I'm going to show you my electricity bill. But before that, I need to tell you something about those solar panels. So those solar panels are on-grid solar panels. Now, what does on-grid mean? On-grid simply means that you don't need to install any batteries to store that electrical energy. Uh, the moment the solar panels produce electricity, either consumed directly by the consumer or if it's not consumed by the consumer, then it goes back to the grid. So let's say uh, my consumption is a lot larger than what my solar panels are capable of producing. In that case, all the electricity by produced by the solar panels, it gets consumed by me. So none of it goes to the grid. But in cases where my consumption is less than the production by these solar panels, then some of that energy goes to the grid. So during the daytime, the solar panels, they used to produce the highest amount of electricity. Because during the daytime, the sun is uh, almost perpendicular to the surface of the solar panels. And that is the time of the highest production of electricity. So during the daytime, the production is at highest and my consumption is not that much because I don't need to uh, run a lot of lightings and stuff like that. So the consumption was less, but the production is a lot more. So in that case, some of that electricity was uh, getting to the grid. But during the evening or the night time, we used to import a lot of uh, electricity from the grid. So basically there is a difference between how much you are giving to the grid, which is exporting, how much you are exporting to the grid and how much you are importing from the grid. So there is a balance between the two and I'm going to tell you what exactly those numbers are. So watch this video till the end because you are going to learn a lot about how you can save electricity bills. So take a look at these Adani's half cut solar panels. The combined power output of these solar panels is 8 kilowatt and in total there are 24 solar panels. So one of the main reasons that they are producing such a high amount of power is because we keep them clean. I used to clean them once uh, in a week. So which is why there is no dust and uh, stuff like that. And I've also installed uh, some other solar panels in the back. These are for the residential purpose of the building. So these are Adani's mono cut panels and in total this produces 12 kilowatt of power. But their efficiency is a lot less than these uh, half cut solar panels. So these were the older ones and the half cuts are the newer ones. And this structure of the solar panels is actually made up of GI pipes, galvanized iron. So it's a very solid structure. It's not going anywhere in high speed winds. So uh, I don't know if you are able to see, but uh, here it shows that it is 390 watts plus minus 2 watts. So the, uh, the rating, the energy rating of each panel is 390 plus minus two watts. So another very important consideration whenever you are installing a solar plant is when do you need the most of the electricity during the summers or during the winters? Uh, I'm guessing that you are also like me and you 
require most of your electricity during the summers to power all your air conditioners or your appliances. So in that case, I suggest that you check your geographical location and see what should be the best angle for your location. Uh, so in my case, uh, I got to the conclusion that the best angle for my solar panels is eight to nine degrees. So in Kota city where I am living, uh, there is a misconception that if you place your solar panels towards the south, the south facing solar panels, they are the best, but that's wrong. That's the biggest misconception. Uh, that is because if you are placing your uh, solar panels completely towards the south, let's say at about 19 degrees, 20 degrees, then these solar panels will be producing the most energy in the winter. But you want your solar panels to produce the most energy in summer. So for my location, that angle is 8 to 9 degrees. Uh, actually, I learned it the hard way. Uh, the residential solar panels in the back, they are positioned at about 18 degrees. And we were noticing that those solar panels were producing the highest energy in the winters. So we thought that there is a problem with these angle. And we did some research on the angle of the sun during the winter and during the summer and then we came to the conclusion that we should place our new solar panels at about 8 to 9 degrees. But take a look at the solar panels uh, in the front. Uh, these are placed in some other people's home. So these panels are tilted so much towards the south that they are positioned to produce the most amount of energy in the winters and I think that's a complete wastage of energy. So basically they are leaving a lot of money on the table. So I suggest that you do your own research what angle is the best for your location. So this is where the fun part actually begins. So let me give you an overview of what this electricity bill looks like, what it is about. So here this unit section. So this is the number of units that I imported from the grid so this is the import this section here this electricity bill details it tells you about how the electricity bill is calculated so for the first 100 units the electricity rate is 7.55 for the next 100 units it is 8.5 for the next 300 units it is 8.85 and for the next 26 units, it is 8.95. So the total of these numbers, it comes out to be 4492. Now, after that, uh, the electricity companies add a lot of fixed charges, this electricity duty, this water conservation says, and this urban says. Now, uh, all these fixed charges and these duties, you have to pay even if you have not imported any electricity from the grid so these charges they will always be added to any connection and this right here this sundry adjustment so this is all the adjustments like uh, if you have exported your solar energy to the grid so that will be deducted in this section so here the sundry adjustment in my bill comes at about 4480, 4480. So this right here is the interest on security deposit. This means that uh, whatever the deposit amount you have submitted to the electricity company, the electricity company gives you an interest on that amount. And for me, that interest amount comes at about 93 rupees. Uh, next is interest allowed on the amount of meter security. So whenever you are applying for a new connection, you have to give some amount for a meter, for an electricity meter. And again, on that amount, you get an interest. So in my case, it is 16.2 rupees. Now this is your power from solar generators. So this is the amount which they have deducted. So the amount that they are deducting is 510 units, which means my solar plant has exported 
510 units. 510 units I have exported and 526 units I have imported. So basically there is a net import of 16 units. 16 units is your net import. So after deducting the sundry adjustment, my bill comes at about 1700 rupees. So let me tell you how is this import and export of the electricity done. So basically, during the daytime when the production is at its highest and my consumption is not that much, so some of that electricity goes uh, in my store and some of that goes back to the grid. So the exported electricity, the total of that comes at about 510 units. So I have exported 510 units. But during the evening and the night time, there is no solar production. So I have to import my electricity from the grid and that import is 526 units. So this 16 units, this is the net difference between the export and import of the electricity. So if you try to calculate that, what is the cost of one unit? So it is about 8.57, 8.57 rupees per unit of electricity in Kota, Kota Rajasthan, where I'm currently living. So a normal question is that, is my store just using 526 units of energy in a month? No, it is actually using a lot. So during the daytime, when some of the electricity was going to my store and some of it was going to the grid, then the part which was going to my store, that part is not shown in this bill. It is not included anywhere. So for that, I actually checked my solar inverter and in the month of June and July, my solar plant actually uh, built 1100 units. So 1100 units, my solar plant built in one month. So all this unit, all these units are consumed by my store. And additionally, I am also importing 16 units from the grid. I hope you are getting my point. So the total amount of electricity that my store is utilizing in a month comes at 1116 units. So my store is utilizing 1116 units. So now let me calculate for you guys that how much will it cost in electricity if I have not installed any solar panels. So for that, I am going to use another sheet. So 1116 units multiplied by 8.57. This should be the amount. This comes out to be 9,564 rupees. Now I have not added any fixed charges and I have not included any adjustments simply because these adjustments, these extra charges, these fixed charges, they will be added to both the sides. So this is when I have no solar panel installed, no solar plant. Now, when I have installed a solar plant, my effective units are just 16 units. So 16 multiplied by 8.57 that is such a drastic change. This comes at about 137 rupees with solar plant. So that is a lot of difference. This is 137, sorry. Let me just correct it. With solar plant, I am getting a bill of just 137 rupees and without a solar plant, I'm getting a bill of 9,564 how much difference is that so let me tell you what is the difference so 9564 minus 137 so this difference is 9429 this is the difference in the 
electricity bill and I have installed these solar panels this these half cut solar panels at about 42 rupees per watt so at 42 rupees the total cost comes at about 3 lakh 36 thousand rupees so if you want to calculate in how many months your solar panel will be free we simply divide it 336 triple zero divide by 9429 and this comes about 35.6 months so this roughly corresponds to three years in just three years your solar panel is completely free now you may be wondering that this is not the perfect calculation yes i am aware of that fact uh, this 1100 figure like 1100 units per month this is not constant throughout the year so this 1100 units is actually the average because during some days the electricity production is unusually high and during some other days the production is very low depending upon the clouds depending upon the weather so this 1100 is just the average but you get the idea that there is a lot of difference in electricity bill in the two scenarios so i hope that i was able to give you some explanation of my statement that how i was able to save thousands of rupees in electricity bill and just a small advice that if you really want to invest your money somewhere then i think solar panels are the best investment right now the best investment because take a look at the current situation the electricity charges are rising day by day and after the end of three years you will still be paying for the amount that you have given to install the solar panels which was three lakh thirty six thousand but after three years the cost of electricity will increase so this is a win-win situation there is no loss there is nothing to lose there is always something to gain and with the incoming of electric vehicles i think this is again a golden opportunity for investing in solar panels so this is it guys uh, i hope this video was helpful and these videos take a lot of time a lot of energy a lot of patience to build so if you like this video then please hit that like button and subscribe so that you never miss any of these informative videos in the future so keep watching and i'll see you soon